Okay, today is July 2nd, 2023. Happy early 4th of July, everybody. Today we are going to do a pepper update and I'm going to answer two questions that people ask very often this time of the year. They're both about managing watering. And so um, I recently went out of town and Texas weather exceeded 100 degrees the entire time. And so uh, I used a little trick to keep my plants alive. So let's go take a look and I'll show you what I did. Okay, so for these guys here, and this here and those over there you see those are the ones in pots and they're very small pots so if, uh, if you know you don't water them uh, constantly then they will just dry up so when you go on vacation they surely gonna die if you don't do anything about it so this is what i did so for these here you see there's these bags right here and so what i did was um when i went on vacation i gave the plant a good thorough water kind of like wetter than usual and then I tied it up into a bag like this. So I put them into a clear bag and like that. And I tied them up like that. And for five to six days, sometimes even a week, because the, the moisture will go up uh, onto the plastic and it will fall right back and with that constant moisture in there uh, it'll it'll allow the, the leaves to get some water and uh, you know there's no evaporation in there because it just cycles into the bag again and then that's how this one this guy survived the five days that I went on vacation I mean you know these these ponds right here they, they'll dry up in a single day if I don't do anything about it and for these as well, I just have the bag, tied them up, and then I went out of town for five days, came back, and they are still good to go. Uh, one small issue is as soon as you release the bag, make sure you put the plant in shade because this is what happens. You see, the plants, the leaves are gonna be really, really wet. And so uh, if you allow the sun to beat down on them, It'll cook the leaves just like this, but it's, it's fine because <laughs> the, the plant survives. And so that's the best part about it. So I'm still happy, even though with these burnt leaves, they, they will recover just fine. And so that's, uh, that's for people that go on vacation that live in really hot climate and there's no way to water these small pots. Uh, try this method. I guarantee they will live at least five to seven days. Okay, so back to the, the raised beds. So with the raised beds, you really can't cover them all. And so one thing I suggest you do is have a drip system. And if you don't have a drip system, you can do something like me. I have a sprinkler system set up in very strategic uh, area where it can water these plants for me. And I have my sprinkler on a Wi-Fi system. So let me show you. Okay, so here is my Wi-Fi system. And so this is a, uh, a system that I use. And so I have different zones right here where I place the plants. And uh, all I have to do is select the zone and hit run. And I could, these, are, these are test run. You can run it for as long as you want. So you can run it for one minute, two minute, three minute. So for a test run, let me show you. So hit run. And then you see, there's my system right there. And now it's on right now. You see that? So uh, the raised bed will get a lot of the water from some of the spray over there. Okay, so there, there it is. You see here, the sprinkler hit the area right here onto here. So it will uh, water these plants. And so for the five days in 100 degrees uh, Fahrenheit in Texas weather, that's how I kept these plants alive. And uh, same with this, except the rabbits got to them. Look at this, guys. <laughs> you see these? They ate up all of the leaves on top. This one, too. Look at this. So, um, yeah. Sometimes, uh, you know, the, the rabbits would go in my yard. I have one rabbit that, that lives permanently here. I don't think he does this, but uh, I've seen other rabbits that come around. I don't, I don't, I don't really know, but <laughs> anyway, so that's what happened right there. And so these guys were eaten. So I need to find a way to block the rabbits from eating these. And here are some uh, new plants I just added. These are the um, uh, Kangster White Ties right here. I love these, so that's why I keep growing them. And so they should be able to make it towards the end of the year and produce fruits. 
and so um, I will be adding a few more I have these pumpkins right here you see these are the baby yellow pumpkins so, uh, last year my my uh, kids they they carved some pumpkins and once they're done playing with it, I just threw them out and then somehow the seeds survived the winter and it grew into this pumpkin I just left it there and now it has one little pumpkin right there you see the little the orange one the mini ones that you always find in the stores and that's what they are okay so here are some more these are in the buckets and so look at those those are my white ties as well these are all white ties right here i think these are um actually i don't know but i, I looked at them and i think they are the stargazers yeah they they should be the stargazers yeah, so for sure. Not not the the um, star screen, but the stargazer red. These are amazing peppers, guys. Very cool, and uh, they taste great. Very very hot because the parent is a hornet with the with the white ties. So they they are awesome peppers. The colors are really really neat too. See, you get orange. Those orange are really cool, and then it turns red. When it turns red, it's kind of sweet. But the orange part right there, those are the hottest okay here is another raised bed with multiple varieties in here we have a reaper starata hornet vicious peach a very special variety and serrano and this serrano i've been eating uh, for the past few months and uh, this is a very nice variety that is very underrated uh, serranos are just excellent peppers that are crunchy has perfect amount of uh, heat and they're just such great peppers for making uh, pickled peppers and so that's what i've been doing I'm, i pickle these and also i make um, um salsa with these and i made some recently to bring to a pool party and my friends love these the heat is just great it's not too hot the the the, the taste is just so fresh and so if you had serrano in the stores before uh, these are even better if you grow them yourself. So I highly suggest growing some serranos. You'll be amazed at the flavor. <laughs> okay, next up we have my star flower. And this one happens to turn red this year. Uh, last year it was white. And so I have another one, uh, a few other ones growing right now. And so if it turns out white, I will take a look and I will show you. But um, these are very nice variety, very productive, easy to grow, and they're actually pretty hot. They look a little innocent, like a Thai pepper. I mean, not innocent, but I mean, uh, they look like they have low heat, but they're very, very spicy. But overall, great variety to grow, and it will produce so much for you to use the entire season. <laughs> okay, next we are back to the Niwakis, and I want to give you a little details. These are just awesome varieties of peppers. They are crossed uh, with a Thai variety, the white Thai, and so that's why that you see these little clusters right here. And uh, some of them grow like this, grow upwards, and some grow downwards like this. But they're simple plants to grow. They're super productive. They taste great. The heat is pretty good. And so I love this variety because they just produce so much. And so if you grow one plant, that is all you need for the entire season for just one family. And as you can see here, you see these clusters here. I just love the way they grow. So they grow in clusters and then the cluster will have another uh, stem out of it. And then that stem will have another cluster of its own. And so that's the habit that, that it grows. And it is so awesome. Great variety to grow, really good. And uh, the heat is really nice. And we have these uh, Linzo crosses here that I overwinter from last year. This is such amazing variety. It's, it's so productive as you can see here. Very, very easy to grow and you get like lots of peppers all season. And with this variety, the heat is much less than the Niwaki. And so I have a friend that doesn't uh, like heat too much and this is his favorite. He said it has great flavor and the heat is just perfect. So I think this is around uh, maybe a hundred thousand Scoville, uh, less than a Thai pepper for sure. But uh, I love making these into um, chili oil and when they get super dry. And when they turn red, they, 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 their heat is reduced and they become a little bit sweeter as well. Okay, back to this raised bed here. And this one has the tangerine tiger. This is the, a variety given to me by Paula. 
and uh, I'm not sure what stage this is in but uh, the shape is still pretty con inconsistent and so sometimes you have these round shapes right here and sometimes you have like sort of like a bonnet looking variety or plant and then this here a little long and then some of them have like these little tails right here so they're all over the place but um pretty cool variety easy to grow um they handle the heat pretty well and uh, they're the first pepper variety to fruit this year for me and then my white eyes here these are my absolute favorite variety and i grow them every season i grow a bunch of them because everyone i know my family extended family friends they all love these and so i always grow extra so i can give them out and um as you can see they're very similar to the niwaki you see they grow in cluster like that except they're white and so those two varieties are on my top list of, of plants that I, or varieties that I love. And here's a peek at my little bunny. You know, the, the bunnies usually come out at night, but this guy here, every time I come out to the garden, he, he would come out and just hang out. And he doesn't run away or anything like that. I, I think he ate my peppers, I'm not sure, or maybe somebody else, but uh, he's, he's always here. So there it is right there, just hanging out. Okay, so anyway, so that is my white ties and just gorgeous variety. And here's the one with different colors right here. See, they change from white into like a gold color right here. And then orange and then finally the red. The, the stage, uh, people have wondered which is the best stage to harvest. And this is right here. When it's like a pearl color or this, this is fine. But this is when I like them the most. This is when they have the most flavor. Um, the, also the hottest so all of these here I will be picking this weekend for my parents because they all love these things so anyway guys that is all for this update so I hope you enjoyed so far and um, if you have any questions or comments please leave it below and thank you so much for watching